Hey everybody. The desk here in the tech room is an absolute freaking mess. That usually means Nick has been working on something. I wonder what he's been doing today. Well for starters I got the USB internal floppy disk drive adapter done. I got this off eBay and I actually had to change out the cable that goes to it. It had an internal style USB, no I'm sorry, it had an external style USB cable and I retrofitted an internal style USB cable onto it. So that's ready to get installed to the Mid-Tower Deluxe. But there's something else I've been working on today as well. You see the glue gun, you see the wire snippers, <laughs> you see the solder sucker. The soldering iron is already up, it's done cool down. Yep, I've been using the soldering iron today. Well, of course with that. But there's a little something else here. Introducing a new camera. What better way to introduce a camera than going ahead and modifying it beforehand? Yes, this is a DXG 5B6V camera. Safe to say it's been a while since I have actually had a DXG camera as one of my main cameras. The last time I had a DXG camera as my primary camera was most notably the DXG 567V which in looking in hindsight that thing is a piece of crap compared to how the um, ZI6 does considering how similar they are but that camera got lots and lots of use that filmed the original cooking with Intel episode that has well over a million views you know that camera was pretty famous for a few reasons nearly for the fact that it was I'd say nearly indestructible this camera here is actually I'd say one of the better offerings from DXG um, the thing with DXG is almost every one of their products they have some good things going for it but there is somewhere in the design of the camera there is a flaw with the DXG 5B6 v that flaw is with the factory microphone you can go on YouTube right now and look up videos of people using their DXG 5B6 v cameras and you'll notice a very high-pitched squeal um, this is this is something that the DXG 567V did as well and my um, ZI6 cameras can do sometimes notably the weather case camera it does it kinda um, usually I've, I've noticed with the mic controllers or mic drivers on these cameras you if the, if the microphone is not getting a good connection or the microphone itself is just not a really good one you'll get some of that squeal in the audio of the video and if you want to remove it you actually, you actually have to go into audacity and use the notch filter to get it out kind of aggravating but the first thing I did to this poor little camera <laughs> which I got off of eBay for $15 I've been sort of thinking about getting one of these for quite some time but there for a while people on Fleabay were asking too much for them you know asking like thirty to forty dollars or sometimes fifty dollars for a camera that's well used and has lots of scratches and dings on it well this one came along fifteen dollars not a scratch on it and I, I honestly I felt kinda of bad buying this thing knowing what the heck I was getting ready to do to it <laughs> yeah um, of course modify it big time okay so the first thing I did to this poor little camera was I got rid of the original microphone yeah it's gone it is history and I put in its place one of the mics that come out of those counterfeit Sony ECM DS70P microphones like what I'm using right now on my ZI6 to film this video um, and I gutted one I, of course those microphones are stereo mics so they have two mics in them and I parted one out and actually installed it in this camera which that was quite a job let me tell you why the wires going from the back of this mic go over and around to the other side and go through I mean if I remember right okay correction they don't go around but they do go let's see down through here and you may see where this serial number is well just above that it's about halfway up into here it's kind of hard to see there we go about halfway up the camera 
is where they the um, mic wires actually soldered to the board, and they're actually soldered into SMD terminals on the freaking board. Yeah, surface mount. So yeah, that was fun uh, resoldering in those wires, but I managed to do it. It was one heck of a job, but it's done. Okay, so the second thing I did was something you've always, probably already noticed on the other side. This camera, <laughs> just like my Play Touch and my Weather Case camera, are running off of 18650s now. See, the DXG 5B6V offered two options for power supply. You could run it off of four triple A's, which I don't recommend. Um, or you could run it off, I believe it was an MP60 lithium ion battery. Which was just a single cell um, lithium ion battery that just slid into the camera on its side. Pretty common. And you could power it that way. Generally, lithium ion is a better way to go. You get higher capacity. But I wasn't going to sell for just what the MP60 would provide. I wanted more. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, why sell for less? Why just go big? And that's exactly what I did here. <laughs> Instead of using the, the standard MP60, I have two 18650s in here. And, of course, the runtime of this camera depends solely on the 18650s I slap in here. Right now I have two LG Chem 2200 mAh cells in there. Which, two of them in parallel, which they are in parallel, they're not in series. Um, combined together gets you 4,400 milliamp hours, which is a ton of capacity for a camera like this. Um, for example, on my PlayTouch ZI-10 camera, I have over here these pink LG Chem 4.35 volt 3,000 milliamp hour cells. I can load two of those into the PlayTouch and it will record for nine hours sometimes ten hours it actually fills up a 32 gigabyte card before the batteries run out and that, of course that's actually during the day um, when it actually fills the card up faster but if I can start a video at night and of course it'll go all night and sometimes the batteries will go dead before the card fills up but I'm like I say nine to ten hours which is phenomenal <laughs> considering um, with the factory battery that was in that camera, I only got at best an hour and a half. So, yeah. The thing I like about this DXG camera is the LCD. You can flip it around like this. You look straight at it, which of course I got the flashlight going in. And you can probably see me right there on the um, display. See, that's the nice thing about this thing is um, I can look right at it. For example, I want to film a video of myself talking. There I can see myself right in the camera's display. And also, this camera offers a, quite a lot, I think. Um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, with DXG, it's like... Some of their cameras were almost perfect, but had a flaw in them. Well, the flaw in this one, I'd say, is pretty much fixed. The audio is considerably better with this microphone I put in versus the factory one. I do have some comparison video to show you, which I may show here in this video. This camera offers, let's see, going to, for example, going to mode. Okay, I just went to picture. Okay, now we got their menu. This is the configuration menu. This thing has two menus actually. So we have another button over here where you have white balance, quality, effect, resolution, capture mode. You can actually record just plain audio with this thing. And a stabilizer. Now the only thing with the stabilizer is you can turn it on, but it only takes effect uh, as long as the camera is turned on. Um, you go to turn the camera off, for example. I'm going to just go get out of this menu here. As you see, the little hand right there, stabilizer is on. If I turn the camera off, 
you should see it's turned off. Stabilizer is turned back off again. For some reason, under that one setting, does not stick. I don't know why. It's kind of disappointing, but because I, guys, I'll be honest, I've seen quite a few videos of people doing tests with these cameras. Let's say walking inside of a mall, for example. Um, look, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to dizzy you out there, but um, yeah, that's what the videos look like. Because they may have perhaps turned on stabilizer at one point and then turned the camera off and then turned the camera back on and then turned out it was disabled again. So, it's nice to have the stabilizer option there, digital stabilization, but if you go to enable it, it should stay enabled. But, you know, that's, that's only a minor, minor issue I'd have with this thing. So I'm going to get out of this. I want to show you guys something else this camera offers. Um, for example, I'm going to just veer away off of the camera. For a moment, you can see how the low light is making this ZI6 go um, crazy here. Everything looks really choppy. That is slow shutter. This is it's also a thing that the um, DXG567B camera had, and also the 579. However, on the DXG567 and the ZI6, you cannot turn this feature off. Even when it's, for example, on the ZI6, it offers HD60. You would think in HD60 it would actually disable slow shutter, but no, it doesn't. Which really defeats the purpose of having HD60 set as your video mode when things look choppy and low light. The DXG579V offers the functionality of being able to turn off night mode, as it's called, on that camera. On the 5B6V, they go a different approach. By default, slow shutter is not turned on. I'm going to try to set this up a little better for you. Give you a better focus on the um, display here. I'm going to pan this camera around and you can probably watch and see how it looks perfect. No, no judder, no, no juddering or anything like that. Now, Let's say if you are in a low light situation, like for example, you see the ZI6 doesn't even like that, but I'm talking real low light situation. Like, I'm talking, for example, darkness. Um, the 5B6 V offers, well, of course, you can adjust the EV right here, which is pretty cool. But the, I gotta figure out exactly where it's at. Okay, that's zoom, that's digital zoom. Yes, I am still new to this camera. You can even turn the display off, which is very cool if you're looking to conserve battery. Okay, where the heck is it? There we go, you gotta press the button. Okay, so let me get that, there we go. Get back to a regular screen. There we are. Okay, so I press that button, and you now have a light. Built-in light, which is pretty freaking bright, if you ask me. It's, I think it's a Cree LED light. Yeah, it's just pretty bright. <clears throat> and, of course, with that, it helps you to be able to see quite a bit better. So we, we can essentially call that stage one. Night mode. Turn all these lights off here. So we are filming in a pretty dark situation here. But let's say if the built-in light that's not sufficient enough for you. I um, mean, you need more light. Press the button again, and now you have night mode, which you can probably see how it looks. Just like it would on the ZI6. So, the approach they have with this camera is it's only enabled when necessary and it's manually enabled. So, and of course, you can turn it off like so. Let's go and get some light back in here. The other thing I find funny about this camera is the battery indicator. Now, these cells are 
pretty much fresh. I just loaded them in not long ago. But <laughs> the built-in battery indicator has been all over the place. Um, you may have noticed on this video already. It has displayed two bars, it has displayed one bar, and it's already back up to three bars. It just goes all over the place. <laughs> Like it's really sensitive to what the current voltage of the battery is at the moment. Now I'm curious to know how long this thing will run. That's just it. I don't know. I just, I literally, just before starting this video, I literally had just finished this thing up. I just got those new cells put in. Well, not new cells, but <laughs> you get the idea. I've got the, I got the thing put together. So it's relatively new to me. I'm still learning it. There, get her flashlight. So that's, that's still something I'm going to have to, to learn and get an idea about. I would suspect that this thing can record for a very long time with the supply of power that it has off those <laughs> two eighteen six fifties. So yeah, introducing a new camera, the DXG 5B6V. And of course, it's not factory. You can count on that. <laughs> this thing is not factory. It's got some mods on it now. Yeah, it's not like I'm talking about a car or something. But um, yeah, I got the um, got the much better quality mic and the upgraded power supply. So I plan on using this for a multitude of different things. Um, I may use it for filming long, like time lapse footage. I know I'll be using it for for certain videos. Let's say if I want to feature myself talking in the video, I may use it for stuff like that. I'll use it during times where the the um, ZI6 will just, of course, do this. And I plan to use this for some Cube Comp MTDX videos for filming elevators and things like that. It's just now that I got it done, I can experiment with it and see how this thing does. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of random video. Introducing a new camera. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, everybody. This will be a test with the DXG 5B6V camera alongside the Kodak ZI6 to see how these two perform side by side. It's late in the evening. Sun hasn't quite set just yet. I actually had the stabilizer enabled on the um, on the DXG camera. Do some walking around here, and already I can tell it looks like the DXG camera looks like you're zoomed in towards something. Actually, no, not actually, it's quite the opposite. The Kodak ZI6 looks to be more zoomed in, kind of hard to explain, but, anyways. I mean, of course, the ZI6 has no stabilization at all. And it's only, I think, what, the 10th of June? I'm already hearing cicadas out. Like, really early. like the DXG camera is adjusting quite well to the different brightness levels. And of course the Kodak ZI6 by the way does not have its original microphone. It's using an external mic jack that I made with a fake Sony ECM DS70P microphone. Let's walk into these woods and see how the cameras adjust.
And of course the um, ZI6 slow shutter will probably be coming on because there's no way to turn it off. Unlike the DXG camera where you can turn it off. It only comes on when you have the light on and you actually have it set to night mode. Walk into these woods and have a listen to the um, cicadas that are here very early. Going into the woods. I think the ZI6 is already starting to get juddery because of the crappy slow shutter. The DXG camera is still filming good and clear from what it looks like. Look off that way. There's Timmy's old shed. And of course the Kodak Zai 6 video quality is deteriorating quite rapidly now. So like the only fault the DXG camera has, this 5B6V is crappy audio. Which I think I'm going to be able to modify it and make it better. I think it's just got a crappy microphone, that's all it is. And of course the sun's setting. Let's see how these cameras handle walking, which one looks more clear. I purposely shook both cameras there for a second. At least on the display of the DXG camera, everything looks a little bit brighter than the ZI6. Okay, so it does appear that the DXG camera does have a wider view versus the ZI6. We'll try to zoom on each camera.
zoom in the ZI6, and we'll zoom in the DXG camera. The digital zoom on the DXG camera goes quite further than the ZI6. I can definitely say that the DXG camera does have a wider viewing angle versus the Kodak ZI6. As the sun continues to set, it's getting darker out here, so the Z6 is going to struggle a bit. When I look at darker stuff, the DXG camera, things look a bit brighter. I have to say the um, DXG camera, when you run it on Alkaline Triple A's, it does not seem to last long. The ZI6 takes two double A's, which you can use rechargeables if you wish. I'm going to convert the um, DXG camera over to lithium ion because it's real easy to do. Going back into the woods, the Kodak ZI6 is struggling pretty badly right now. Yeah, the ZI6 looks quite crappy right now. Whereas the DXG camera, things are quite clear. It looks like the video is playing at like, I don't know, 10 frames per second on the Kodak. Whereas the DXG camera is still quite smooth when I turn the cameras back and forth. So we're going to ramp up this test of the cameras before I kill the batteries on the DXG. Because I don't have any good AAA rechargeables to throw in it right now. I'm just using up some alkalines that I have. Yeah, my plans for the DXG camera are to first resolve the issue with the audio and make the audio more clear and then convert it over to use 18650 batteries. Here's a look at the DXG camera and with the DXG camera you can see the, um, the ZI6. Okay. It wraps up that. That concludes the test of both cameras side by side. Okay, everybody. This will be a test with the DXG 5B6V camera alongside the Kodak ZI6 to see how these two perform side by side. It's late in the evening. Sun hasn't quite set just yet. actually had the stabilizer enabled on the um, on the DXG camera. I'm going to do some walking around here. And already I can tell it looks like the DXG camera looks like you're zoomed in towards something. Actually, no, not, actually it's quite the opposite. The Kodak ZI6 looks to be more zoomed in. Kind of hard to explain, but anyways. And of course, the ZI6 has no stabilization at all. And it's only, I think, what, the 10th of June? already hearing cicadas out like really early
Looks like the DXG camera is adjusting quite well to the different brightness levels. And of course, the Kodak ZI6, by the way, does not have its original microphone. It's using an external mic jack that I made with a fake Sony ECM DS70P microphone. Let's walk into these woods and see how the cameras adjust. Now of course the um, ZI6 slow shutter will probably be coming on because there's no way to turn it off. Unlike the DXG camera where you can turn it off. It only comes on when you have the light on and you actually have it set to night mode. Walk into these woods and have a listen to the um, cicadas that are here very early. Going into the woods, I think the ZI6 is already starting to get juddery because of the crappy slow shutter. The DXG camera is still filming good and clear from what it looks like. Look off that way. There's Timmy's old shed. And of course the Kodak Zass 6 video quality is deteriorating quite rapidly now. So like the only fault the DXG camera has this 5B6V is crappy audio which I think I'm going to be able to modify it and make it better I think it's just got a crappy microphone that's all it is and of course the sun's setting Let's see how these cameras handle walking, which one looks more clear. I purposely shook both cameras there for a second. At least on the display of the DXG camera, everything looks a little bit brighter than the ZI6.
Okay, so it does appear that the DXG camera does have a wider view versus the ZI6. We'll try to zoom on each camera. Zoom in the ZI6 and we'll zoom in the DXG camera. The digital zoom on the DXG camera goes quite further than the ZI6. I can definitely say that the DXG camera does have a wider viewing angle versus the Kodak ZI6. As the sun continues to set, it's getting darker out here, so the ZI6 is going to struggle a bit. When I look at darker stuff, the DXG camera, things look a bit brighter. I have to say the um, DXG camera, when you run it on alkaline triple A's, it does not seem to last long. The ZI6 takes two double A's, which you can use rechargeables if you wish. I'm going to convert the um, DXG camera over to lithium ion because it's real easy to do. Going back into the woods, the Kodak ZI6 is struggling pretty badly right now. Yeah, the ZI6 looks quite crappy right now, whereas the DXG camera things are quite clear. It looks like the video is playing at like, I don't know, 10 frames per second on the Kodak, whereas the DXG camera is still quite smooth when I turn the cameras back and forth. So we're going to ramp up this test of the cameras before I kill the batteries on the DXG because I don't have any good triple A rechargeables to throw in her right now. I'm just using up some alkalines that I have. Now my plans for the DXG camera are to first resolve the issue with the audio and make the audio more clear and then convert it over to use 18650 batteries. Here's a look at the DXG camera. And with the DXG camera you can see the um, this is the I6. Okay. That wraps up that. That concludes the test of both cameras side by side. Testing. Testing.
Hey everybody, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that you actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.